Underdog Podcast. It's your host, T. Lee, and my co-host, Jack Cowden, will be live today, as usual. Was pulling up the acting like they couldn't see me. Now she want to clean me up like a squeegee. I told her that's on me, baby, like yellow BZ. With the peanut butter tear like a Reese. He's going to push his bills through all the obstacles. Get it done. That's the underdog. They don't forget the underdog when they see me. I hit them with the John Cena, they can't see me. You may overlook this person, but the underdog is the one who's going to put in the word. It's over, you know? Because you have to lose to win, whether you think losing is a uh, big event. Out of mind. All I'm saying, just be careful who you idolize. I'm kicking this scripture just before the pain. Ain't no cap in my words, I go against the grain. So I always believe that, like, I took so many risks to make this thing happen, you know what I mean? I'm always working, bro, like, uh, I just, like I said, I'm energy driven. The underdog can put you on your ass. The underdog can put you on game. The underdog can show you something that you didn't know. Can't go down. All you can do is go up. So are you going to stay where you at or are you going to move up? Do the bangs. Do the bangs. He said he's nervous. This is his first time doing it. <laughs> <laughs> Yo, yo, what it do, good people? Welcome to the Under Dollars Podcast. We back at it again, another Saturday, season six, man. For the culture, featuring Orlando Zone, entrepreneur, host of What We're All Thinking Podcast, one of the hottest platforms in the city. We got Nathan Linden on the show today, man. Yes, sir, Ski. Yo. Yo. What's happening, brother? How you feeling today, man? Good, man. I'm excited. Um that I get to be on the other side. Um, it'd be fun yeah, when I get to uh, talk to people and I don't got to be the one asking the questions. I could just be the one talking um, and just answering questions and just people get to know me from a different perspective for real. I felt everything you just said just then, bro. That's why I was just like, man, I just left the stage and it felt good to be on the other side, bro. It been a little minute, you know. That's but that's what, that's what this um, platform for, man. You know, we're going to, Dive in on who Nathan Linda is, man. Who the genius behind the the what we're all thinking podcast. You feel me? You know, get the full scope of the story. You feel me? So, um, like I say, welcome to the Hundred Dollars Podcast. You know, appreciate you taking time out your schedule. Uh, first and foremost, as we push the importance of knowing ourselves, like how would those closest to you describe you outside your crowd? Like, what type of vibes you contribute to the room? Uh, some people say I'm vibrant. Um, people say that um, I just bring a certain spark. Um, I put a fire under people, um, and I and I, I'm very caring. I like I like helping people. Um, hence, that's why I started my platform. I do a lot of things, and I, I just feel like I give that that I make your life better um, when when I walk in the room. Um, I try my best to support anybody I can in any kind of way, even if I just meet you i'll try my best to kind of support you in any kind of way i can now that real bro that's some light mind and stuff right there you hear me like you know sure. you got an understanding of how the world work bro you feel me like everybody got to contribute and put in the pot man for this for any changes to really happen you know it's like we feed off each other oh uh, sure. so as we getting closer towards the end of 2024 like how has this year been treating you thus far and like what are some lessons you learned this year patience um this year taught me a lot of patience um it, it it's okay just like d was saying it's better it's better to have slow motion than no motion um yeah, I, I thought you know me hitting thousand subscribers my life was gonna change right then and there and this and that and it's just patience and then you know sometimes when you in the grind it's it's more of a like you don't see certain stuff that you and then once you get a little taste of what it what it was to get to that point like the hard work was worth it yeah yo nah big facts bro like you say you know any type of motion i was just saying on at the interview i just did man like people think motion is you know the highlights you see on instagram that go by in 60 seconds but they don't show you the grind and and what really went behind the scenes you feel me like that's why I say any type of motion, bro. On to my anything contributing to what you putting in the pot. You feel me? Cause one one moment, bro, that that perfect recipe gonna come out, bro. Everybody gonna love it, bro. It's the secret recipe to your success. You feel me? Like 
you know, that's why I just feel like, bro, you doing any little thing that contribute to the cause, you know, but just yeah. not doing nothing at all, bro. It's like, all right, bro, tighten up. Like, you feel me? Like, you ain't got a question why you where you at because you ain't doing nothing to, to elevate what's going on, you know? For sure. Uh, so, you know, what was the experience like growing up, you know, in your city and how did it impact, impact your decision to create this platform? Um, so it all started uh, growing up on Leno was good. It wasn't as bad as people make it seem. Um, they make it seem like we, we some murder town or some where, you know, we this bad town, but really and truly, when you look at the people that's not in the entertainment industry, just people that are living their lives, their daily lives. Cause I don't want to say regular people cause everybody's special in their own way. So mm -hmm. living in Orlando was pretty good, man. I, I went to Jones high school. Um, it was fun for everybody. I mean, my 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 childhood, well, we had a good time. I was talking to one of my dogs like like about two weeks ago, and we were just talking about how much fun we had looking back at old pictures um, and just saying, bro, our childhood wasn't so bad. We just was in a rush to be grown, bro. And, like, what influenced me to start the platform, I, I just – I talked a lot, bro. Everybody wanted me to be a lawyer, bro. Like, yeah. and, like – I felt lost at a point and the podcast just fell in my lap to where it was like, oh shit, here we go. This is the, this we here now. So it was like, that was just something that fell into my lap. And then I knew everybody. I knew all like the rappers. I knew all the influencers. I knew all the football players cause I played football. And it just went, like I always say, when something's for you, it's for you. You know what I mean? So I feel like God putting that in my life, it just, made me who i am that's why i flourish so much that's why i really when people are like man you the best this and that i give all the glory to god because god put it in my face for real nah facts you know it's just like when you recognize what's going on you feel me like you know you might get the signs or whatever and like you say it just happened you know for sure um so what was the initial vision you had for it at first though when um, you talked about in it so I'm going to be real. I'm, I'm I'm the type of person I like to keep it real when I'm on these social media platforms because you never know what might come back to you and bite your ass. So I thought me getting all my famous homeboys and famous homegirls, I was going to blow up overnight. And it didn't work that way. It was like I had to put in the work. I had to go through the lumps and bumps. And my vision was I'm going to be the hottest thing. And... It, that's just what it's always been. It's just always been a constant, just getting people in that chair. And then uh, I don't know if you ever heard of David Shands. He's like, he calls himself the king of podcasts. I don't know if you ever heard of him, black guy. I probably, I probably seen him. Probably not yeah. by name. I probably not seen the clips. Yeah. Uh, yeah. He, um, he, me, I went live with him because I was inspired by what he had going on. Cause I used to watch drink champs all the time. Yeah. Cause they had yeah. all my favorite, um, artists and favorite like it made me get to know everybody and i started watching him and what he was doing he was he was like hey this is what you should do this is how you should do it and now i just ever since then it was just like let me rebrand and i was like i didn't know what a rebrand was and then i didn't even know that i, didn't, I had to need a specific crowd i was like i want to appeal to everybody i want to appeal to the women the males the kids the older the you know mm -hmm. i want to compare compete with everybody but i realize I, I have a niche and i have a certain person that i'm trying to reach so that's kind of in a nutshell what i was trying to do yeah it sounds like you went in with a, a mama mentality you know the mentality of an athlete when you approach it you know go hard and be consistent definitely. with it you know definitely oh. before i dropped my first episode i had like 20 episodes loaded tight stuff yeah now nah, you had a plan with that bit. <laughs> so, uh, how do you ensure that your podcast, you know, would effectively serve as intended purpose within the community? You know, um, just bringing awareness to certain things, especially like they say in Orlando was dry and this and that. Uh, just yeah. getting the perspective of everybody because my platform is what we're all thinking stories behind the crowd. So, I want to know how you started and how you got to the point that you're at today. And it just brings awareness to the people like me and you who want to know what these artists are doing, what these politicians are doing, or what these athletes are doing, and how they got to it. And 
how the people in the uh, media world of Orlando, they can affect what we have going on or they can affect their opinions really matter because I learned the art of asking a question. You got to ask a question without even getting people to know that you're asking a question per se. Oh, yeah. You just got a different way of wearing it, you know, but I, I respect that because you put them in a space where they don't feel on guard and not really get into it, you know? It just Definitely. make them feel comfortable to answer. Nah, Definitely. Really. So, uh, now, nah, man, I ain't even know you gonna say that, but yeah, man, the city ain't dry, bro. I, 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 hey, the city, the city, like you know, it's almost like um a tropical storm, bro. People be talking about like it's like the desert, bro. But now nah, you think like that, you know what I mean? You got the mind to think that it ain't nothing going on, bro. It's a lot you can do. A lot of people to network with, bro, and and give good energy with, bro. Like. I just don't agree with it just being dry all the way, bro. Like, ain't got no flavor, no salt, no seed, nothing. Like, come on, man. Bro. I just feel like, me personally, it's like a thing of, it's just because we ain't got nobody in the club playing music. Um, and these artists are don't got the chance. They're not flashy and all yeah. this other stuff. Because I threw a platform called sob and i had a lot of great artists on my platform so it's it's just a simple fact it's just like b raw was saying i interviewed him yesterday it's just yeah. an opinion base yeah nah but when you were saying that too like they ain't on flash and woo -woo and stuff like that it's like because the music industry has taken a, a a change bro i'm an artist as well and um mm -hmm. Now it's more like a little cause social media with the popularity and stuff like that. It's more like it's getting away from the attended the initial thing it was, it was about the music. But then you did have a personality with artists on there, you know, whatever and stuff like that, you know, different ears. But now it just took a different approach, you know. But like for artists that's out here really still dropping and doing their thing, it's just more like the same way we had the transition from CDs to digital, you feel? Know, we just gotta find exactly. another way around it, you know. It ain't exactly, yeah, for real. You just gotta maneuver. We gotta change. Like you can't just be stuck in time. Uh, but still, you know, for any artist, whatever, you know, listening to it is like maintain your authenticity, though. Stick true to what you want to do and what you want to put out. You know, especially yeah. with Nas being independent, like you in control of your artistry and everything. You know, you ain't gotta just go for anything. Uh, sure. So in what ways, you know, do you maintain consistency and authenticity with your podcast content? Um, I just do it, bro. To be honest, like, yeah. I have droughts so I'm like, oh, I don't want to post or oh, I don't want to post these clips or da da. But I got such a great support system around me um, and people that actually are fans of my podcast or people who are actively supporting me. And that's what keeps me consistent. And then I always look back at my why and I look back at things like, bro, if I'm sitting here still being stagnant instead of dropping these clips, how can I help my family if I'm being if I'm being lazy? So it just keeps me consistent just looking at my situation and wanting to get out of my situation and seeing these YouTubers, streamers making millions. They keep me up at night, bro. <laughs> they keep me up at night for sure. Nah, for real. I shot Miss Murder, Miss Murder. Dot A. She said, We love you, Nate. For sure. That's my yeah. dog right there. Community member, man. That's what it is, man. Hey, they pouring in. So, uh, what were the initial steps you took, though, when you decided, you know, when you first started inviting people on your platform and how you know you built the connections? Like, you already oh. had the network, it sound like, but like, what was your initial steps, though? Um, First, I do my research. First, I want to, I want to, I want to deep dive into your life, because, I, as y'all know, if y'all watching, um, I like to do story time. So, I'm gonna give y'all a story time that recently happened to me. Is this guy, um, a basketball player? He doesn't play basketball no more. He's more of a regular human now, per se. And he walked into this house. We was um playing NCAA, um, and he's like, hey. Ain't you that podcast, nigga? And I'm like, yeah. And it's so crazy because I was I was gonna be like, hey, I know you. And he was like, how you know me? And I was like, bro, I was just watching a documentary on YouTube. And he was like, so 
when I look at this, I look at it as me being a journalist more so than a podcaster because I I enjoy knowing who you are and why you do what you do. Or I watch all your interviews. I look at everything you do. More so in the in a nutshell, not, like I'm one of the good stalkers of your life for like three to six months before I sit you in that chair. Or if I go to a show or if I if people just put me on with you, I just already know. You know what I'm saying? Like another story when I was interviewing Pootie, um, I watched him talk about the queso situation on another platform. Yeah. And I was like, when I interview that nigga one day, I'm gonna ask him about it. And lo and behold, he said, ask me anything. And that was one of the things I wanted to touch. And it just, it went crazy from there. So it just, just knowing, knowing your people when they sit in a chair, just making sure you make them feel at home, feel comfortable. Everybody, yeah. I haven't had nobody left my platform and said they didn't have a good time. I haven't had nobody yeah. say it was a trash interview. You know what I'm saying? So I just want to make you feel at home and I want you to actually feel comfortable sitting there and actually I know what I'm talking about sitting across from you. Nah, that's big, bro. Like, even when you're saying a, a sense of journalism, like, I kind of come with the same type of approach, too. Like, if anybody got any articles or I look at their whole platform and try to, if you do music, like, uh, one guest, you know, he uh shot Sandman a jeweler from Atlanta. And uh, mm -hmm. he an artist, but he a jeweler. But his artistry go way back to 2013. So I'm able to use the platform, go all the way. Let's start from 2013. Let's talk about certain, you know, stuff that were going on then. Because sometimes people platforms show their whole timeline, you know, instead of definitely. Just, yeah, it'll show the different transition, you know. But I ain't even looking at his journey. I just was like, I got to come with some type of approach, you know, with people before I bring them on, you know. Like try to get as much information or whatever I can about what it is they doing. And like you definitely. say, getting the story, bro. The story is like. Who don't want to talk about this show, bro? Everybody is somebody. Everybody done went through something, you know? And it's like, when you bring people on your platform, in a sense, you let them plant their seeds on your on your tree, you feel me? They in your garden, you feel me? And then they just, they leaving that. And people come in and soaking up game from that, just watching it. Now they go start they own, bring they shit to your garden, and just keep going, bro. It's just like the circle of life, bro. For sure. Real. Definitely. Hit it right oh. in the head. So uh, could you share some memorable conversations or insights you gained from your guests? Um, a lot of people tell me um, I'm great at what I do. Um, a lot of people tell me keep going. A lot of people appreciate what I'm doing. Um, one thing I will say is I learned business. I learned that everybody ain't going to like you. You're going to go through things. You're going to lose a lot of people through this journey and i lost a lot of people that i held close to not that they passed away or nothing like that yeah. but more so we just ain't friends no more we just we just separated and i had to learn to be okay with that um a memorable moment yeah, no, uh, yeah okay yeah 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 spook, spook, yeah shout out to spook, bro. spook tmg spook when he got on my platform and he came and did his thing that was my first moment where I touched real numbers, real engagement, real everything. And it made me really feel like, because I always ask my guests, what was that moment that made you feel like, yeah, this is some shit I want to do for the rest of my life. And that was the moment where I, I got a thousand views in a day. And I was like, oh, shit. Yeah. And then now his real, his short on my YouTube page, is this something? And then after that, it's just a trickle down effect. Everybody just wanted to come sit down with me just all based off of how I interviewed him and what I was asking him and how I was asking. And it's yeah. just like, Nate, you're like, your wordplay, like, it's different. And it's just like, mm -hmm. I just do the best I can, bro. I'm just, and, and I don't fake it. And that's another thing, too. I don't fake it. I kind of try to be as authentic as I can as well. Nah, I feel that, man. Yeah, shout out to Swoop, man. What's crazy is even just speaking of when you brought that name up, you feel me? Like a lot of us in Orlando, we done cross paths or knew each other just depending on what 
ear you came up in, but a lot of us, we done either all of them been at some little center, because we got a lot of centers on Orlando. We got Norway, Smith, Frontline, all of them. I don't know if Frontline's still going, but Jay Hankins, part all of that stuff. As kids, mm-hmm. we all of them been in the midst of each other at certain places, you feel me? So it's like, you know, throughout the journey, it's like, you know, okay, everybody know each other, but it's just like the fact that, you know, people are working together, bro. People, you know, that, that count a lot, you know, because if anyone, it's going to start in your city because everybody, for me, everybody got something in common. The city of Orlando, we know what it's like. We live there. Can't nobody on the outside tell us about our city, you know? Definitely so, can't. And that, and that mean a lot, bro, when everybody just pitching in together, you know? Um, mm-hmm. So how do you perceive the media landscape in Orlando, you know, and how does your podcast fit into it, you know, with the content creators and everything going up, man? Um, I love my city. Um, I love what we got going on. Um, media, media, we, everybody's doing their thing. Um, we all trying to fight for the same goals. We all trying to do what we need to do. We all trying to push the same message in different ways. Um, how does my platform fit? It goes back to being authentic. It goes back to being um, somewhere where you can get all your thoughts out the right way. Your message will be pushed the right way. Uh, and it it will put a light on you. Um, because I've gotten messages from guests that I had that got shows because of my platform, or they got seen more because of my platform, or they be in Walmart and be like, oh, I seen you on Nate's show, and they'll call me like, bruh, this shit lit, bro. like, people actually remember me from your show and this and this, and it's just like, bro, like, that's what I live for, that's what I'm, that's what makes me happy, because just to see people getting something from me what i brought to the table and they're getting something from it it's great facts bro that's everything you feel me you know because when you're doing what you're doing bro you want people to soak up the game and you know because you had the plan already on how this gonna be effective you know sure. um so how do you see the media and content creation in orlando evolving you know over the next few years you know with everything going on god willing me hopefully in the next five years we'll be having a different conversation. Um, I pray every day. Um, I give God his thanks for all the blessings he has gotten me through all the trials and tribulations of this year. Um, but I see us, if everybody comes to their, like if they keep doing what they're doing now, the next five years will be so much greater. And also too, it's like, I've been doing a podcast thing for three years and I'm just now getting the recognition I'm just not getting pe- more people to see me. I'm just now people are like, bro, you wrong. And in my head, you know, humbly, I'm like, thank you. But in my head, I'm like, I've been doing this shit for so long. Right. Like, right. come on, bro. Like, y'all been supposed to be seeing it, but it's just like some things th- take time. So if, if you look at it in the next five years, I'll be at seven years. Hopefully, we're doing some big shit by then. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. We, we able to eat off this shit soon. Um, and like I said, they always say, I don't know if you ever heard this, but I always hear, don't focus on the money. Focus on if you would do this for free. And shit, I'm doing it for free now. So shit, yeah. it's, hey, yeah. I'm loving it. It's just, I'm waiting for everything to fall in place. Real talk, bro. It's like in the beginning of any crowd, bro, even when you playing sports, bro, you you literally invest in your time for the monetary later, bro. Is it like when people get drafted, go to the league and all that, bro? It's the investment of everything before that, though. You know, it's like you got to stick to the cause. You know, just even as an artist or a, you got a podcast or some bro. It's like, okay, if it's not monetary gain at first, you build these this network, bro. This umbrella is crazy. You know what I mean? Like, and then when the, the money gonna come, they always tell you, bro, just tap in, stay down. Everything else gonna come, bro. And just focus on the boom, 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 like. But the money and all that, everything will come later. But you got to just focus on what's going on. You feel me? And you receive, like I say, is is the artists and stuff too. You do all the open mics and stuff like that. I mean, you can't get the bending right if you know the business where you can receive doing your little songs and stuff at open mics. But you got to get out there, do the groundwork first. But all that other stuff comes later. It's a guarantee. But the consistency bring that bill. 
Yeah, I definitely, really? I definitely, I was talking, I think I was, uh, this morning I was talking to b -Row. I was have. I had a conversation with him and I was just like, I see people out here asking why, why I'm not getting the love, why I'm not, I'm like, bro, just go in the gym and keep shooting, bro. Mm -hmm. I said, a lot of these artists that made it, they, they, they didn't have social media, so they didn't know who was supporting them and who wasn't supporting them, and they didn't care. They was out there passing out CDs, yeah, standing in front of record labels, doing the stuff that niggas was scared to do. Now niggas letting a Instagram or Facebook views dictate mm -hmm. whether they're good at what they do or not, and I that's how I feel. Like I know I'm good at what I do. I don't need no rec like recognition. I don't need nobody to say. Look at Nate, like, look at what he know. Right. I, I'm just keep putting up them shots because, like, I always tell people, sports help me navigate through a lot of uh, hardships and it helps me navigate through. And it's like, well, I play football and I know basketball pretty well. And it's like, if you keep working on your ladder drills or you keep running them routes or you keep shooting them jump shots, you keep working on that crossover. When you get in the game, boy, it's crazy because I remember, I don't know if you ever played at Barnett Park. Yeah, and I, I used to watch uh I used to watch the little shooting videos of my cousins, like my cousins David and Hello. We was he they used to, uh they live in Pine Hills area. Uh and we used to watch like Derek Rose videos over and over. We used to go outside and practice, and then like yeah. us going to Barnett Park was like our um time where we practiced those moves That's on the, the guys. And, yeah, yeah. So it's yeah. like once we get practice move for months on months on end, finally I could do it behind the back, lay the ball up with my left hand. Or oh, I yeah. made the shot the way the guy showed me how to make the shot. And some people mm -hmm. just lose sight of that when they come to this social media game. Like, sometimes I post 15 reels, they all do well. And sometimes I post 15 reels, they all don't do good. But what can I do? Nah, I felt when you said that with Barnett. Like, Lorna Doom was that, for me, before it was, it got turned into what it is. Like, before mm -hmm. the stadium came, like, that was the stomping ground where we get it in out there, you feel me? Uh, sure. and like you say, bro, like I remember them days, like looking at and one and all, just going outside. We trying it, like we ain't even be in the house, just looking now. Let me what the move is, boom, what hot song did out the door with that bit. You hear me? For sure, for sure. Straight up, but like to say, practice, bro. It just practice, keep doing that bit. You know, we don't all start off the damn best at what we do already. It just it, it becomes what it is based off the work we putting around it. And the more we learn when we doing it, you know, and then that shit just come natural <laughs> for Definitely. real. So speaking of the social media and everything, like how do you differentiate like between genuine progress and the illusion of progress as you know, it's portrayed on social media. Like I said, you can see a 60 clip, 60 second reel that probably have a year worth of work or two worth of, two year worth of work, but it looked like down that bitch just it just happened that fast. Mm. <sighs> when when people tell me or when I see when I go to events and people be like, I seen them clips. I said, did you watch the interview though? Nah, but I seen right. clips though. <laughs> so it just be it just be me just just seeing the feedback live when I go around like. And people actually know who I interview. Like, I, people are like, oh, I watch your podcast. My first question is, okay, thank you for watching. But who did you watch? What episodes you watch? Who? And they give me a list. And I'll be like, okay, that's genuine progress to me. Because like I said, I don't yeah. gauge my social media or my platform based on social media likes and comments. I base it on is, am I really leaving a legacy behind? Am I really letting people see what I got going on? Is people really tapping in? So when I go out and get those, those, those compliments, or I get those feedback, that's great for me. Or when people swipe up and be like, "Keep going, bro. I see you, dog. Keep doing your shit, bro. I see you, bro. Like keep pushing." Those are like people see me, and just like me, me and that basketball player, somebody I looked up to since I was in middle school, him yeah. actually noticing who I was, it was like, "Hey." Keep shooting them yeah. jumps out, brother. It's coming. Yeah. It's always somebody watching, bro. Like, real talk. Like, and when it when they do, like you say, when you do hear something like, oh shit, nah, they be keep going. Like, it just be an extra boost. <laughs> Some damn nitro, bro. Like, hey, mm -hmm. I was cruising, boy. But they, hey, we don't need speed time right now. For real. Oh. Mm -hmm. 
So when it comes to your your podcast and the topics that be discussed, like which one is you know some of the common most common ones that you go through with people when they come on? Uh, I ask them, would they rather be loved or feared? I ask them, loyalty or uh, would you rather be uh, loyal or have respect? Um, I ask them the dinner qu- dinner guest question. Um, I, I a new found question I asked them is a couple of them. How do you tell your homeboy his breath stink, or how you tell your homegirl her breath stink? Mm-hmm. Or I will ask them, when is it comfortable to burp or pass gas around your significant other? How long does that take? Or who's more toxic, male or female? And those questions always kind of throw them off kilter because when they answer those questions, those are them being their self. So that's how they would rather be in those situations. And that gets to, they take the mask off and they actually have to answer those questions as themselves instead of them being whoever they want to be that day. I feel that. It's like mm-hmm. bringing, a per, bringing the personality out on while you get them to tell their story. You know? Definitely. But, so uh, how do you... Uh, you already put the authenticity out there, you feel? Cause I'm gonna say like, how do you balance staying true to your original vision? Like what you started out with versus how the changes in, you know, the community or the industry. Cause it's always, it's a steady change, but you know, as an artist or content creator, something you gotta like keep some going around, you know, to stay somewhat relevant. But it's like a balance between not getting away from what your intended purpose is, you know, in the sense of like to please others, you know, because like you say, it's gonna be people that like it, don't like it, but you gotta, you know, it's almost like when a person gets signed, they forget about the original fans that was fans of their music when they was in their mixtape era, and now they done crossed over and started doing stuff for another audience. Mm. I have a different perspective when it comes to um, this topic because. I feel like, because I go back to this interview, I watched it, bro, and it changed my perspective on a lot of things, and it also made me understand that what I'm doing is properly, because a lot of people don't want to admit that you have to get a little dirty in order for your name to stay relevant, mm-hmm. and you you can get dirty to where your morals are still intact, but you're getting your point across, like, Young and Ace. I watched the interview with him at Academics. I don't know if you watched it. I don't want to spoil yeah, it for I you. Watched, yeah, I watched some. Yeah, I watched it. I watched the full two hours and 47 minutes. Yeah, yeah. That's how you know I watch it because I know the whole timestamp. Yeah. And Academics asked him, hey. He um, was on his he was on his net, but he kept saying Fulio. So what was going on? Like he was he was in it. He's but let me tell let me tell you something. Young and A's got a big bag off that. I'm just laying y'all know mm-hmm. that. So he did it for the money. But to each his own. So the point I'm trying to get across, you like, so you think you're gonna stop this in Fulia, or why did you diss him so many times? And young and A's were like, I was just trying to capitalize and keep my name relevant. So we already knew they had an issue. We already knew they didn't like each other, and you know yeah. they seemingly kind of was throwing shots at each other even when he was alive. But to make my point is sometimes you can do a little dirt, but still be the same you. Because I did a little real, I don't know if you've seen it when I was talking about the Hispanic women and how I love my Spanish women. Da 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 da. And this is where it goes to self-evaluation and it goes to um not looking for supporters. If you're not going to support, I'm going to make you support. So when I said that and I posted, a lot of people were like, why did you post that? Because yeah. I was getting 900 views. I was getting 1,000 views. Now 7,000 people watching me. I'm on the blogs now. Yeah. When I was talking positive, when I talk about how this, this, and this, oh, he's supposed to say that. So yeah. now when I say offlandish stuff, now yeah. y'all want to tell that. Yeah. So That's, sometimes... Nah, go yes. ahead, no, sometimes you gotta get a little dirty. Sometimes it's gonna it's gonna hurt, but it just comes with the with the game sometimes. Now nah, that sounds like some uh some well from a music perspective, that sounds like 50 and Ja right though. Because fit I mean 50 trolled a lot of like he 
he knew how to play the game. Then you got Charleston White that got the same type of approach too. And he said out the gate what I'm doing. And people still like, when he say my actions in real life say different. It's the internet, man. Like that's what I'm telling you. Mm-hmm. I, I I hold I hold myself. A lot of people know me. And that's why when I drop that clip, for people who I dealt with personally who know me and whatever the case may be. I'm like, y'all know me in real life, bro. Mm-hmm. Y'all know I'm trolling. So if y'all mad about what I posted, I highly don't care. Because at the end of the day, I know what I signed up for. I know what I bring to the table. And like I always say, I love my black women. I just like Hispanic women more. Yeah, you from Florida, bro. You, you going you, you, you surrounded by them with, like a mix to everything. I don't know. I mean, you got, like I say, you got other air where you don't really see as many spent, but Florida, yeah. I mean, how you gonna feel the type way about that? I mean, they there. Oh, <laughs> uh, so when it comes to like, you ever had a, a podcast show or a situation where you had to handle, like, how do you handle like any disagreements or different opinions on your platform? Because you are way authentic, but like, like I say, when it comes to people having their opinions or they might feel some type of way. <laughs> like you just like man fuck it you know whatever i let it ride bro because yeah. i want it to be raw and cut i don't want it to be edited i don't want it to be yeah. scripted if yeah. we're gonna argue we're gonna argue bro like yeah. that's what i want to do because another person i looked up to you probably know who this guy is Stephen a smith yeah 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 he's somebody <laughs> that i love bro if i could sit across the table from that guy right there i would yeah. enjoy it because i have so many questions so many and how he how he's able to listen for two seconds and able to change your whole statement or how you feel because a lot of people gave him scrutiny about Kyrie and he was like mm-hmm. he was basically saying if Kyrie plays he's the best player on the court everybody's like bro leave Kyrie alone he's like bro I know what Kyrie can do and lo and behold Kyrie played the whole fucking season where they went NBA finals yeah yeah so that man ain't wrong bro a lot of people owe him an apology so it's just being authentic as, as possible. And I try my best not to argue with people. Uh, I let them do the arguing with the fans. Uh, yeah. Because I, if I argue, we, we taking it up there. Nah, I feel that, bro. Real. So um, can you talk about any specific episode, you know, a guest that had an impact on you? Like a story that just, like, it resonates with you? Hmm. Let's see. Let's see. I, I could look at. I got, I got two phones, so I could see. Um, I did a women's segment, and this is what I'm saying. Yeah, females like they know. I did a whole women's segment with black with my mom. A lot of black females. I went all the way to Homestead, Florida City, yeah, to interview yeah. black women. Um, and those those. Those episodes held a lot of weight to me because it just basically broke down certain decisions they made, certain sacrifices they made, uh, certain things they did. It just opened my eyes. Um, shout out to my boy uh, Whitley on the beat. Uh, his podcast is always when me and him lock in is great. And um, me and Africa Black, uh, Mellow. Uh, the interview I did yesterday with B-Ron Cool was a good one. I, I came home. After a long day, and I watched it after I interviewed them, just to watch it over again. It just was a great vibe. The one I did the day before with uh, Be More and Larger Cartel, great interviews. I feel like my my all of them, those people that I named, they had a lot of impact on me because they make me think like, oh shit, you actually talking about something. And my boy, uh, who am I with T Murray? Every yeah, time he yeah. talk, is is it is like. It's like I listen because it's so many things, so many stories. And Spook, of course, Spook got a lot to say. Um, and he, even though he's crazy, he he he's talking a lot about different things. And it's just like everybody, for the most part, I pick from what from what everybody says and kind of incorporate that in my life. Not only that, um, it just makes me a better person throughout the journey and the process. Nah, facts, bro. You know what I mean? It's just like still being a student, but you actually getting some game. You ain't just getting no bullshit. You feel me? Uh, 
So when it comes to collaborations, you know, with other creators or media platforms, such as myself, like how you go about it. I'm I'm gonna say it right now, bro. You ain't no hesitation. You just like, all right, let's do it, bro. You feel me? Like that's big right there. That shows um, a lot already without saying it. That's because I'm I don't want people to think I'm Hollywood and I have a story to tell. Um, just like you. Like when you come down here or if you're down here, I do podcasts and I drop them the same day. Yeah. So I don't even would like to waste no time. Um, but yeah, I love collaborating. I think collaborating works for the both parties. Um, I don't want people to feel like, oh, I'm too good or I'm better than or nothing like that. Cause I enjoy this. This is like I said, I'm doing it for free, bro. I love it. It's something that I can sit on this podcast for hours and talk about different stories, different things I do all day long. It just comes with me loving this shit so much. Um, because it's something that I can't get away from. And if I don't do it for too long, like if I don't drop a podcast in months, I'm going to feel yeah. some type of way. Yeah. You feel what I'm saying? So it just goes back to me just loving the sport, loving the game. Cause me watching drink champs, me and dollars worth the game. Um, the pivot podcast. Um, um, I am athlete. Those different things. Like I'm watching the Jaguar right interview right now. Like I'm just, oh, I yeah. just love the I just oh, love the Dim. game, bro. I love the yeah. game of a podcast. It's just something that I enjoy. So if a creator, anybody want to collab with me, bro, I'm definitely down. And like I said, I always tell people, hold on, where? Oh, I got the keys to the studio. So if y'all want to go three o'clock, four o'clock in the morning, hey, let's go do it. Or anytime y'all want to lock in, I'm ready, man. Let's do it. So yeah, man. I enjoy Very the sport. Real. Matter of fact, bro. Matter of fact, bro. Um, I actually be heading down though, bro, for the little uh for the content Z. I missed the last two. I ain't gonna mm -hmm. lie, I missed the last two, but I was like when child then I was like, yo, I'm gonna hit that bit. I'm gonna try to got down, uh, come down like two days the day before. I'm gonna try to be at the studio and uh then we gonna turn up at like I say Saturday. If, if we all in, bro. Do and it, then, like I said, I'm trying to run into everybody I've been linked with, bro. I've been in the eighth. And I just been <laughs> like two years, bro. I done like used the network back home in Atlanta and everywhere else, bro. Just been just going in. Now I'm at the point where I do the same how I hit you, bro. It's it's limitless, bro. It's wide open. Anybody just I call motion, like I said earlier, as long as you and I can get I can pull something, you doing something, you, hey, come on, let's do it. Like for real. For sure. Now, it's like, you it, it's just like what happened? No, I said when you down here, just hit me, bro. We can lock yeah. in, bro. I'm ready. Yeah, I'll be around for sure. Um, so what has been like the most unexpected outcome of running your podcast, you know, thus far, three years in? Some all interviews ain't gonna be glass, some of them gonna be fucked up. Camera turn off when you battery die. Uh yeah. just the normal uh things uh, I get anxiety about, but for the most part. It's, it's it just comes with the journey is the beauty of the podcast realm and like i said uh i sat and watched uh you and b raw i was on the live i was watching oh, okay. it's like yeah this man this man doing it remotely like i think i think eventually i want to get to doing this eventually i want to get to doing more remote yeah because there's a lot of people that i know that can't come down here and do oh, that and that's what that that really what that fit bro i ain't gonna lie I'm talking about when it's like uh when you reaching out beyond, like I said, out of Florida, go some words with it, whatever. It's like, all right, boom, we can do, still get it done. You know, it ain't really mm -hmm. like, oh, ain't hell, we ain't know, but we can't do it. That's where it's like the time change where we living in now. Shit, early two thousand, it wasn't too much of you know we really could do all this. You feel me? So it just mm -hmm. not using the resources, bro, for real. Definitely, and but I'm I'm all about. Shoot, if you in Atlanta and you can't come down here, I, I want to come to you. Like, because yeah. I want to start traveling. I want to be more remote. One of my biggest goals and one of my dreams is to get a, a brand new van, suit that bitch up, yeah. and go state to state. <laughs> like, yeah. eventually. Uh, that's one of my biggest goals, because once I get some money and I'm I'm well taken care of, my family taken care of, I want to take this thing on the road. I want to be a damn freelancer, if that's I could be. And that's gonna change the game because who doing it right now like that? 
like just like a tour bus, just going around and just you know hitting all different spots, finding out who's who in the city. And yeah, that's gonna be hard. That's gonna be hard. So um, when it comes to like podcasting and stuff, like what are some you know common misconceptions people may have about it? You know, when it comes to the media in Orlando, uh, we all about drama. Um, podcasting is easy; anybody can do it. Um, we don't take enough time, and we don't enjoy the people that we got here. Um, and all those things are wrong. Um, podcasting, like I said, it got to be for you to do it because it's a slow grind. It's a slow grind. It is. Um, and us about not loving one another, one another. And I think for the most part, now that me becoming one of the pillars in the city, a lot of people are starting to see me in front of the crowd. Literally, I'll pull my phone out, record any artist if I know their music, and yeah. I'm singing their lyrics word for word with them. Like, let's like we're not standing in the back, we're not sitting in this section no more. I want to be in your grill, like showing you that I really fuck with your music, like you know what I'm saying. So it's just it's just certain things that people people think we're too cool for school and it's not that i'm bringing a new wave to the city i'm bringing a new vibe like it's okay for me to shout out underdogs podcast it's okay for me to support this guy post this guy on my story or share the links out to people so people can tap in it's okay to do that people think oh if i share this or they it's like monkey see monkey do yeah, yeah. in a way so if I share, not everybody else want to share. Let's let you be the first one to share. Don't let nobody else take over. Nah, I feel that. That why I tell everybody, bro. When y'all lock in with us, bro, it's like a, a, a infinite amount of support, bro. I support everything I get mine. You post it, I see it on the feed. I'm gonna repost it. Just like B Raw, Chow, every, everybody, bro. I'm reposting it. I is new single drop, new whatever, whatever, bro. That's I just understand the game, bro. Of, like I say, the circle of life, bro. We all contributing to one another in some type of way, either information or bartering with each other, bro. For real, definitely. Oh, um, so how do you see the role of podcasts in general influencing community culture and you know the dialogue? Now, how important do you say platforms are? Very important. This is like the new TV. Um, we're the new TV, so I wanna. I want it to inspire people. I want people to laugh. I want people to wake up and just be be able to sit down and do what I'm doing. Watch Cat Williams talk about what's going on in, in the world or watch uh, Young and Days or watch all these people because you got to understand what we're going through, these people already went through so we can learn from these people. We can join in and kind of craft something with these people or we could also bring awareness to what's going on or we could also give our opinion and like like you said back then jay-z and all them probably couldn't see what these platforms were doing unless it was in the newspaper or it was word of mouth now we could tag mm -hmm. an artist and the artist will see it and repost it and now we got their fans tapping in you know what i'm saying like Pooh didn't even repost none of the the stuff that I posted to him. Just his face alone, everybody's tapping in. Everybody's bringing recognition. So just like you said, the power of social media and what we can bring to the table and how we can shed light on the positive, positive stuff that we can bring to the table is like, that's what we can do. And it's like, I'm happy to see it. I'm happy to hear it. I'm happy to be a part of it because... Everybody said, oh, you jumped on the wave too late. You should have jumped on it during COVID time. Like I said, and I'm going to keep reiterating this every time, when something's for you, God's going to put it in your lap. And he's going to keep it there all the time. And he's going to make you be like, hey, this is what you're supposed to be doing. When I'm at work, I'm thinking about this. When I'm at home, I'm thinking about this. When I get off this platform for, with you, I'm going to go drop probably 100 clips. Just because I'm inspired by what you said to me and how I feel that high that you're on, it gets yeah. me in that <laughs> mode, like healthy competition. Like I see underground part underdogs podcast doing their thing. It's time for me to get back in my bag and do my thing. 
You see what I'm saying? Everybody got a, everybody's scared to say, oh, I don't want to be in competition. It's okay to be in competition with people. But let's yeah. make it a friendly competition. Let's support each yeah. other, but let's also push each other. If I'm slacking, you come push me. If you slacking, let me come push you. And that's mm -hmm. what I want the world to see. And that's how I want the world to feel, to see that great competition other than sports. Nah, fast, bro. Because it's almost like, you know, when it's healthy competition, like, nigga, you just did that? All right, bro, watch. I got this. You know, boom, I Fast. did this. You feel me? But then it's like, damn, you ain't doing, you ain't shaking nothing. Let me shake the tree a little bit. You know, it, it, I remember um one of my partners close to me because I, I had stopped recording a little bit, dropping music. And he said, bro, I'm going to drop a whole dish song. You know, just because you ain't even do no, you ain't do no music, bro. You just been tripping. And I said, yeah, damn, man. he was like, I just dropped some. And he said, boy, you, I, I was definitely do it to you too. But I was like, I ain't get mad or nothing like that. I was like, like, yeah, I just laughed with it, bro. Cause I was like, yeah, I know I played, bro. You feel me? But it hey, be nah, like that sometimes. So uh, can you like discuss any major shifts, you know, in your podcast since you first started, you know, like any, any shifts you realized in the industry as things been changing? Good or bad or shifts Both, as bro. far as what? Yeah, like shifts as in like, okay, it was going one way, just like trends, bro, or anything like that. You know how things change over time. Um, after the spook interview, um, I saw like a lot of people hitting me up, getting a lot of interviews in. Um, I was recording them there every single day, a new person. It yeah. slowed down for me a lot, but that's okay because. Like I said, I, I invested a lot of money into this. So I read my my playbook. David Shans has a playbook. I bought it, $30. And he was like, sometimes it's going to be ways where you're not going to be able to get guests on your platform. And you're going to have to sit on the camera by yourself and talk. And, I, and that's what I started learning how to do. So I'll go in the studio. I'll talk about what's popping right now or what's, what's going on in the world and how's this and that and it, it's been working like i was talking about the trump shit and it got me some uh some people commenting i talked about my experience going to a ken carson concert so those kind of kept me going it wasn't the same traction as me interviewing somebody but it was still traction from people i didn't even know like it'd be crazy bro when i see people from oregon yeah commenting on my shit like <laughs> bro i never been to oregon a day in my life Bro, or people from guys, yeah <laughs> like or i'm in people in oklahoma or california like i look at my analytics and people from texas new york tapping down it's just, mm -hmm. it's just crazy to see so it's just those shifts a lot of people ain't been coming to sit down um but also i learned my value and the amount of work i put in i've been doing this for three years um and i gotta start seeing some type of money from this I got to start seeing something. So I I kind of went into the route of, hey, if you want this to make sense for both of us, this is what I need. Because a lot of people don't understand it takes money to start a podcast. And for me to elevate and for you to elevate, you give him. I'm, I'm different from a lot of people because a lot of people take people money and run. My money is going back diving in to the platform mm -hmm. so say for instance you get on platform i say hey this is how much it is or whatever and that money is going to go to me getting somebody else and then that's going to trickle down and hit everybody on that algorithm because now if i interview charleston white everybody who watched that charleston white interview probably is how i do my thing and they're going to go back and watch all my stuff now you who gave me money to support it it helps you and it helps me in the long run per se, to put it in that show nah fact it's business like i say bro is it is either we share information we bothering we bothering with each other what can you do for me what can i do for you how can it work you feel me straight up definitely um uh, so being you've been in the game for a while three years now like what are some of the biggest challenges you faced in sustaining your podcast if any uh, going through my stagnant moments, going through moments where I, I feel like, okay, I can do this shit every day. And it's like, oh, I'm kind of tired, kind of lazy because I'm still working a nine to five. Uh, and it just be like some days are tougher than others. But 
like I said, it goes back to your why. It goes back to people that's holding you accountable. It goes back to you just just learning that if this is something you want to do, you should be able to do it at least every day. It becomes a habit. And some of the biggest lessons I learned, everybody ain't your friend, bro. Everybody ain't your friend. Like, I came in the game very friendly. I came in the game looking for everybody to support me. And it just didn't go that way for me. And I'm, I'm I, like I said, I... I I got very okay with that very fast, cause I I once I'm done with something I'm done, but when I'm rocking with you I'm rocking with you, and that's just how it is. Point blank, period. Nah, fast, bro. Like the pe the ones that's real authentic, as you say, you feel me, and really got stand on values, bro. Them the ones that's gonna you know link together. The ones that's used to falling out with everybody and every time they, you know, trying to get something like, bro, they just going to keep going on that type of way, bro, until they self-destruct. Like, you got to realize and know, bro, like, how the world works, how it's really working. Like, mm -hmm. even if you ain't got a team of people, you got a team of people in your network, bro, where everybody can link, bro. Like, you know what I mean? Like, it's just knowing who's who and how they play their role, bro, because we all got to play a position. Yeah. Um, so how do you balance though, like as you mentioned with the nine to five and working and stuff, like how you balance your podcast with your other personal commitments? Um I got a plan. I'm I'm learning how to be good at being organized, planning it out, making it make sense. Um, and just cause I love it so much, I'm 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 willing to drop anything for it. If if it if it comes if somebody want to record, I'll stop whatever I'm doing to go record. That's just how it is. I don't know. I just enjoy it a lot. Um, and it just, I don't know. I just don't want to miss a beat. And it just comes with just planning, organizing, writing stuff down, um, making sure stuff is where it needs to be. Nah, fast. It's like you seize the moment, bro. Opportunities. You know what I mean? Cause Got to. I feel like that in anything that's going on, you know, in the energy right in this day, like, it's that moment, bro. It's something about that moment. Is like when you do it, even record music and stuff, like you got that moment where you hitting it right. You try to come back tomorrow, a week later, you, you know, might not have that same energy no more. Might not have that same that same drive behind it, you know. Um, so what's the biggest lesson you learn about the audience engagement, you know, as the engagement start going up? Uh you gotta interact with everybody to keep them hip. Uh you got to interact with everybody. You got to show them that you're not no bougie platform. People could tap in. Um, they can actually be obtainable to you. And because some people, if you don't comment back or you don't show no love, they're going to go away. You want to keep those people intrigued with what you got going on because that person could turn into 10 people. That 10 people could turn into 30 people. That 30 people could turn into a million people. Just over time, people just consistently watching. Like, for instance, when we used to watch like I used to watch WWE. I used to post it, and then yeah. they'd be like, "Oh, what you watching? Oh, I'm watching WWE. Oh, I'm finna watch it." Now everybody's watching that one thing, and it helps build that platform. We used to we used to advertise for so many companies back in the G when we was kids, but we'd have been rich right now. Nah, for real, and that's when a lot of companies would just start not too, because you know it's, it it be so intense when the company first come out, they new getting established, they might got the money or whatever. But the effort and the energy they put into the product be everything, bro. Now I feel like these companies was around back then be so diluted now, bro. Like, damn, WWF don't hit the same as like a couple earlier. Like now it's just like, damn, I can tell they really acting on it, bitch. Like <laughs> back then you couldn't tell me, bro. Big getting yoked up and slant, bro. That man. And tell, tell me, bro. <laughs> tell, really? tell me, man, bro. Real. So, um. How do you celebrate milestones of success successes related to your podcast like for instance i noticed you reached over men on youtube to a platform you know congratulations to that that's major yeah. and uh how does it feel reaching that achievement um at first at first i ain't gonna lie the first my very first achievement that i got this year was like the most memorable one um because uh, you know when I first started this, it was like, get a thousand, get a thousand, get a thousand. And it was like, I'm never going to get this thousand, bro. Swear to God. It felt like ages. 
and when I finally got the thousand, bro, and like me and my family, I was in the house. I was sitting right where I'm sitting at right now. I got the video still on my phone. And it's just like me hitting a thousand. It was just like a breath of fresh air. Cause it was like you get in that mood when you want to give up. Cause it's like God like posted, like, what am I doing wrong? Like, come on. And then when I was finally able to reach a thousand and getting able to post it, cause December, January, I was on the I was on the phone. My stepdad was talking. And I was like, bro, I need to hit this so I can start making some little money mm-hmm. off this shit. And he was like, so what you need to do? I said, I don't know, but we need to figure this shit out today. And he was like, just post every day. Let's see what happens. And it was so funny he said that because earlier that day I was watching a video with DDG. It was a short clip on TikTok. And he was like, I posted on YouTube every day for 365 days. And I was like, yo, let me just do it for 30 days. Yeah. So I did it all December, all January, all February. And then when I finally got to this moment, bro, it was just felt so good. So when I started keep hitting more and more milestones, it's just like, okay, I'm cool. And then when I hit the million, I didn't even post it because I wanted to actually feel it. Because it's like, damn, a million people viewed this shit? Wow. That's crazy. That's crazy. And then now it's just like, now can we go for 2 million? Can we get 10,000 subscribers? Mm -hmm. What does that look like for me? And it's just like, I'm enjoying those moments because it's like, I bet it on myself, bro. Like I bet it on myself because I didn't go to a traditional college. I didn't go to the military. I didn't go any, I I didn't make any impulsive decisions on my life. I chose to bet on myself and it worked out for me. So all those doubts that I had, not making those decisions, when those milestones hit, it made me feel good because it's just like, all right, now how can we make this more lucrative? How can I officially take care of my family? And it's just like, get back in that gym and try to find that next video or try to interview that next person that can get me to where I need to be or try to say the right thing that's going to spark people to tap in. Mm-hmm. And it just, it just felt good. Like also another milestone that I hit, I was on TV and that was great because, uh, you know, that saying, mama, I was on TV. I got to yeah. say that. So it's just like, it just, it's just like God blessed me. Cause you know, you get even even as a rapper, an artist, a podcaster, an influencer, a judge, a police officer, you go through those moments of doubt. Did I make the right decision? Did I do what I was supposed to do? Am I da 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 da? And when you hit those milestones, you're like, damn, this feels good. Let me just soak that in. I thought I was gonna cry, but I didn't cry. Yeah. I was, I was like, yes. So it gets it gets very it gets very serious for me when those moments hit and people are calling me like, I remember when you was at 300 subscribers. I remember when you had this and this. And then I got screenshots, bro, of my channel when I was at 150 subscribers and 2,000 views overall. And it was just like to look at the growth and people actually who've been rocking with me for so long, who've been tapping in. They're like, bro, I remember when you first started, bro. I remember when you hit me up about an interview and we did it. And you was like, you were just happy to be in a room with me. Now you bigger than me. And it's just like, bro, like, I don't know. So it's just a great feeling, bro, for real. Like to just be a pillar and people actually respect me and my craft. Yeah, then I'm knowing the people that, like you say in the beginning when they came on, it made them feel good to see, you know, like, that you took you took serious what you was doing you know Definitely. what i mean like you got people that like it ain't one of the situations like people in the best of their time and then they time just wasted because the other end they ain't doing their part in it you know what i mean facts facts so facts. it's like yeah i know that's a good feeling for them to see that because it gave them a high you feel me like that's I just i got yeah. two story times for you i got two story times they run um, the first story time uh, shout out to my boy uh, Kirby Joseph. He plays for the Detroit Lions. He's number thirty-one. He's he has the most interceptions on Aaron Rodgers in the NFL right now. 
Before he got drafted, he called me. He said, listen, bro, I'm only in the city for one more day. You think we could do this podcast? Mm-hmm. Like I told you, I'm like, if you ever watch WWE, I'm like Edge when it comes to it. The rated off superstar. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? That's how I took that moment. I was like, fuck it. I'm going to call out of work. Let's get this shit done. Yeah. And he, we did it. And that goes back to you saying, uh, sometimes people feel like they waste their time because they feel like, the other person didn't achieve their goals. So when I seen him recently, um, I seen him at the Bossman D Lo concert when Bossman D Lo came a couple months yeah. ago. Not the most recent one. Um, he had a section. I pulled up on him. We talked because he seen me before I seen him. And yeah. he's like, Nate, Nate. And I'm like, oh shit, Kirby, what's up, bro? And I was like, bro, I got so many questions, bro. Like, man, you balling right now, bro. Like, we wasn't expecting you to go this crazy, this song. And he was like, he was like, let's not talk about me. How's the podcast doing? And when I was able to show him the million and how mm-hmm. many subscribers I got, he was like, damn, nigga, I remember when you interviewed me, you had like 250 subscribers. So it was like, damn, like this nigga actually remember. And this nigga been damn near rookie of the year, picking off Aaron Rodgers, going to the playing against the 49ers, going at it with Matthew Stafford, like, this nigga remember what I'm doing? Like, what the yeah. fuck? And I then, mean. literally before I got on the pod with you, this guy called me, and he was like, bro, I think it's time. He was like, bro, I've been watching you from the cut. I remember yeah, when you first started. Batman, oh, it's time. Got it. Yeah. <laughs> he was like, I've been watching you from the cut. Like, bro, I'm yeah. ready. I think you ready, because he got a lot of connections. Mm-hmm. And he's like, I think you, re- I think I'm ready to come sit down with you because you're seasoned now. You understand a lot more. I've been watching you, and I've been seeing what you've been posting. I've been seeing how you've been doing it, and I want to lock in with you. Can we sit down tomorrow? And I was like, fuck yeah, I'm off. Let's do it. Mm-hmm. So it just go back to those moments of keep putting up them jump shots, man. Facts, man. You feel me? People think damn Kobe and MJ and, and LeBron got good out just shooting here and up, man. They they, they mm-hmm. stayed in the gym. You feel me? For sure. Uh, so with everything going on, all the success and everything, when it comes to right now, before the years, I like what you manifest for your podcast that you already see happening. <sighs> That you could speak about though, you know what I mean? You put out though. Um, we pushing hard, we saving some money, we're gonna get some big interviews that we're gonna pay for. I don't know who yet. Yeah. Um, everybody knows I'm a big young and ace fan. Everybody, whoever knows me, y'all know. Um, we, we want young and ace on the platform. Um, I want a lot of Orlando artists on my platform, like I really want to whoop. Eventually, when these boys get out of their jam, I want a hot boy. I want a Glock now. And soon to come, hopefully Rico Cartel comes. Um, and just the personal goals for me and the platform, just hitting 2 million. We at 1.4 right now. So mm-hmm. just hitting 2 million. Um, before the years out, I want to hit like at least 10,000 subs. We have 4,000 right now. So just those things and just getting the numbers up. I want the numbers to look good. So when people look on my platform, like, oh, he doing numbers. I want the numbers to look good. And I want to just be able to soak in a lot of things because there's a lot of promises I made to my podcast that I haven't done. And that is something that I always proud myself on. Put um Being my biggest fan for me and not letting everybody else be that. So that's the main thing. So just just pushing as hard as I can and to get bigger artists on the platform. Cause I feel like what I'm doing with people who are local and who are have the buzz, but it's not as popular as those guys. Imagine what I do with a bigger platform. How many people like yourself and the people in my city who doing podcasts, what that'll do for y'all. You know what I'm saying? So those be the main things that I look into that I enjoy and that I'm looking forward to, and how could it benefit me and my family? So that's just the biggest thing. That's real, man. And um, I like like moments like that, bro. When you sit back and you just organically soaking up all the work you put in, you feel me? Like 
the process you got the you got your own recipe like when you follow a method like that you feel me like versus all right i can cook it myself i got all the natural ingredients and everything or i can down skip the process and go buy this processed food you feel me like like which line you want to take do you want to build your audience organically you want to enjoy the process or you just want to go the fast way and you don't even know how that if it's all real for real you know facts that's it crazy facts. but uh so any exclusive announcement you would like to make for up upcoming event and or show on the way um no nah, i don't i don't have <sighs> let me tell you something a lot yeah. of people are waiting for me to pop out and do something special for the people of Orlando. A lot of people are looking for me to bring back my show, SOB. A yeah. lot of people just want me to be a part of something. And I really, like I always tell people, I really want to lock in with this podcast shit. Full throttle, no gas. I mean, all gas, no brakes. And I feel like coming next year, um, we're gonna have something special. Hopefully, you can be a part of it. Um, but we got something special coming next year. I don't want to speak on it just yet because we still. I want to get this year finished and start yeah. working on something special. But yeah, definitely, we gonna we got something coming. We got something cooking. I just been very silent. I've been letting everybody play their cards and do what they need to do. Mm -hmm. um, I'm just being a student right now. That's what a lot of people don't understand. I want to strike and do something, yeah. but. I wanna, I wanna let everything just play out and be patient with this, cause my next, my next show or my next event is gonna be my best work for sure. Yeah, you playing Mayweather right now. You feel me? Just in the Got cut. To. Yeah. So, uh, any shout outs or recognition you would like to give to those who've been supporting you along the way? Um, along shout, out to, shout out to my family, man. Shout out to my mom, my stepdad, my brothers. Um. Shout out to them. They've been supporting me heavy through this process, whether that's letting me use the car or just taking me certain places or me going to do something, just pushing me every single day. Or if I need something, they there for me. Shout out to my community. Uh, I built a community of like-minded individuals um, on a subscription-based process, and we they've been pushing me. As you can see, they joined the live. I sent it to them before we joined in. Um, and they've been chiming in. Um, I want to give a special shout out to God because God been showing me that it's worth it. Um, God been showing me um, that it's possible. Um, and I want to give a special shout out to um, Gabby, uh, B Raw. Um, they've been pushing me a lot, they've been supporting me a lot. It's been a lot of tough conversations um they've been pushing me a lot and just my overall support system like you know everybody sees the vision because at first i ain't gonna lie people's like what is a podcast what is that about that, that, that. like yeah. how you gonna make that what is that yeah. and when they see me every day just going at it punching it every day shooting every day they're just like oh shit you actually serious about this because i ain't gonna lie i wanted to be a firefighter at one point I wanted to be a yeah. basketball player. I wanted to be a football player. I wanted to yeah. be this. And I never stuck with none of them shit. So they was like, when I brought this to the attention, oh, something else Nate want to do. We just yeah. go keep pushing. But now when they seen it actually was a thing, they was like, oh, shit, okay, you got something with this. And just me going into Walmart and people actually like, oh, shit, hey, that's nigga. Or when I'm downtown and niggas doing the bikes and they got carrying people, oh, they stopping. Like, that's the thing with the podcast is like. It's just a different vibe, man. Like I said, my family, um, the community, um, the people that I've grown to love and respect, and they've been helping me through this process. It's just great to see, man. So, yeah, shout out to all of them people. Um, shout out to my brothers. Shout out to my everybody, just everybody, like in general, my family mostly, because my family is the ones that keep me going. I, I ain't going to lie. I'm going to give you an exclusive. Nate don't care about too much shit, but when his family is saying certain things or his his family is like seeing what he's doing, that's what keeps me going as well. Yeah. Now I heard you reference your family throughout the whole podcast, bro. You know what I mean? And that's real because like I said, family is everything, bro. You know what I mean? Like 
that's the way you start out from, you know what I mean? Who know you best True. and you know what's going on. And like I say, that's a beautiful thing that you're getting support like that, you know. Definitely. And, um, like I say, man, I appreciate you, brother. You know what I mean? I'm honored, you know what I mean, <laughs> to have your time and you know, kick it with you, bro, on the platform, man. But I ain't even gotta tell you, bro. It's like, you know, I'm a student, bro. Cause like I say, the podcast thing. You know, you've been already cooking up motion, bro. You where you where you want to be at, you know what I mean? And like I say, I already can hear what the next level thing is gonna be, bro. Like, you know what I mean? You already on the way, bro. Like, I'm just looking forward to see more success come from you, brother. For real. You know what I mean? Had to I appreciate you letting us give you your flowers. Um Last but not least, though, before we get you out of here, what does the word underdog mean to you? Or what does the word underdog? Um, I ain't gonna lie, she probably gonna hate me for this, but my mom said I've been so long winded on this podcast, so I'm gonna keep it short and sweet for y'all. Um, the word underdog means when everybody overlooking you, um, you able to surpass those long expectations, um. You're able to keep going no matter what, no matter how hard the the, the obstacle is or how to get over the obstacle. Um, you're able to to get to that next level and do what you need to do. And like I said, I've been the underdog for the last three years. And that's why when you said the underdog uh, podcast, I'm like, damn, bodies with what we're all thinking podcast was because we was a low level platform in the beginning. Now we kind of surpassed all our peers. So it's just like, it's just a good time, a good experience. And it's just good being an underdog because when you come out on top, everybody didn't expect it. Yeah, for real. Everybody knew you where you was at before you got there. You feel me? For sure. Nah, real talk, man. Y'all know what's going on, man. This season six, episode two for the culture featuring Orlando's own entrepreneur host of What We All Think of Podcast, one of the hottest platforms in the city. We had Nathan Linda on here, man. Real talk. Make sure yes, y'all sir. tap in with him, man. Appreciate your brother. Be easy. All right. Safe Love. Day. For Safe. sure, bro. Already. Go mouth, rabbit on my teeth. I got carrots. Open up a mouth and see. Got vocal sound like Janet. Marble on the floors, but the kitchen kind of granite. Lean color perk. You would think it's pomegranate. I see flying saucers finna roll another planet. It will fall in place if it's meant to be organic. I got crazy lingo. You would think I'm speaking Spanish. I'm something like a pie. Never leave without the can. I'm enlightened. Ten. I got stone around my neck. I teach her how to earn respect. I walk around with a tag like a mad at the rail. People do any damn thing for a check. So what if you got signed labels? Throw them on the shelf. I don't ask for hell. I just go within myself. Hard times I prevail. I bust up by myself. I let my nuts hang. Cause they don't got no curfew. Go mouth, rabbit on my teeth. I got carrots. Open up a mouth and she got vocal sound like Janet. Marble on the floor is but the kitchen camera.